So verse 18 says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because, everybody say because. So when the anointing comes upon your life, there's a reason, there's a purpose. And that purpose is not to make you feel good about yourself, although it will make you feel good, but that's just the starting point. Because He has anointed me. I want you to say this tonight again, because you're going to have to believe this. Say, I am anointed for a special purpose in Jesus' name. So he says, because he has anointed me, and watch the twos. There are six twos, actually seven. Perfection. But in, in, in one sentence, he adds two of them. He says, I'm anointed to preach the gospel to the poor. People preach the gospel, there's no results because there's no anointing on them. It's a lecturer from university that decides, I'm going to start a church. Nobody responds. He can deliver the same message, but that message is unanointed. Why is the anointing so important? Because the anointing is God's stamp of approval. And through the anointing, when it doesn't make sense and God uses people, we think God should not be using, that's when God gets the glory. Say amen. Hallelujah. So if you think I don't have much going for me, you better believe you have everything going for you. You have God going for you. It says, I'm anointed to preach. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to proclaim recovery of sight to the blind. You see, I have to add that because six is not the number of perfection. To set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So there are, there, there, are, there are seven twos, seven things that Jesus was anointed to do, and he was faithful to that. So you have to discover your to-dos. What is it that God called you to do? Because I've seen in the ministry, because that's my field. I'm not a doctor, but I've seen in the ministry. People see somebody else do something, they think I can do that. Well, maybe if God um, anointed you for it, and if God graced you for it, if God never anointed you for it, you can get everybody's agreement. It will not work. Because God will only approve what He endorses. God will only anoint what He appoints. You do not appoint yourself and say, God, anoint me. Jesus never chose Himself. Jesus was born for a purpose. He had to discover His purpose through the Scripture. By the way, He didn't come out of His mother's womb and say, I'm the Messiah, I'm the Messiah, I'm the Messiah. No, he came out of his mother's womb crying like a baby. He had to be fit. His diapers had to be changed. I know you don't want to hear this, but his mother had to teach him the Holy Scriptures. That's why God chose her. She was a young woman of the Word. She was a 14-year-old young girl who quoted the Scriptures, and she said, Be it unto me according to thy word. Because God knew the Savior would be safe in the care of that woman who would teach him the Scriptures. And through uh, 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 knowing the scripture and being able to quote verse for verse the whole book of um, Isaiah which rabbis had to do he discovered I am the Messiah and yet on this day in the temple he is declaring the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me and everything changes in his life I'll tell you my friend when you discover the purpose for your life when you discover the reason for your being everything is going to change in your life you will be happy you will be comfortable in your skin if you're a man you'll be happy being a man if you're a woman you'll be happy being a woman if you're black you'll be happy being black if you're white you'll be happy being white you won't always think life has done me in no, you were predestined by God. God separated you from your mother's womb, Jeremiah. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, God knew you. God ordained you. God ordained you. Therefore, God will appoint you. So stop living this milling belt, weak, apologetic life on planet Earth and begin to discover who you are and walk confidently like Jesus Christ and say, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me. He has anointed me to be the best doctor in Pretoria. He has anointed me to be a brilliant advocate. He has anointed me for business to fund the kingdom of God. He has anointed me to be a teacher and to change education. He has anointed me. He has appointed me to be a politician in Jesus' name. So you don't need a platform. What you need is an anointing. You don't need a crowd waiting for you. You don't need a hospital. 
You just need to get going. Go to university. I know our students still are on holiday. It's a bad thing. These long holidays mess our young people up. I hope our, our educationists, or whatever you call them, come to their senses at some time before Jesus returns. Because you give young people a six-month holiday, and then they come out of that lazy uh, mentality, and they're gonna, they have to go work where they get two weeks holiday. And they all collapse and burn out and can't handle life because what's happening at university is not real. I mean, if you have like two and a half month holiday, I hope you've got a job. And you're not just lazy sleeping till 10 o'clock every morning. And you're feeling good about that. Okay, I thought I'd just throw it in there. In the absence of all the students. If I was a student, I'd be back in Pretoria. I'd not be sitting somewhere. I think I'd have enough of doing absolutely nothing and not being in church and and just floating through life and just being like a beached whale, rolling around, not knowing what life is about. Amen. You discover your purpose. Purpose. And, and, and I used the word this morning, I elaborate a little bit more on Johannesburg, the word intense, intensity. When Paul talks about the, when the glory comes upon him, with that glory comes intensity. So sometimes people say to me, you're very intense. What do you expect me to be? Hello, my family. You know, um, I think uh, let's just wait. Um, praise the Lord. Um, you know, we're just going to watch it. Um, oh, well, I don't know who it's like. I mean, when you're anointed, you're all about business, whatever your business is. Your demeanor, your focus, your tenacity. Because now you are empowered. You've discovered your to-do. You're not confused by everybody else's to-dos. You need to count me down. I missed it this morning. Count me down over here. You need to discover your to-do. The problem is we look at other people and we think their to-do is better than our to-do. So, so, so you are called to be an associate pastor and then you think, no, I need to have my own church. And I've watched this a million times how people who preach on my platform, this platform, and work with me for years, they get confused when they get the microphone. Then they go start a church, they flounder, they fail, and they get nowhere because God anointed them to be an associate. God never anointed them. They, they, there's no such thing that anybody and everybody should have their own business. So when people preach this prosperity gospel, in essence, there's a lot of error in it. Because you don't need prosperity, you need purpose. Whatever the purpose is. If it's to be an educator, you have to be an educator. Give yourself to it. Love it, because I'll tell you what. Beautiful people, I love you on television. God bless you. I'll get it right next week. You'll be happier in a three-bedroom house being an educator than you will be in a mansion pursuing the riches of this world and you are never fulfilling your destiny because you're going to stand before Jesus Christ one day and you're going to give account for the life He called you to live. Say amen in Jesus' name. Say amen. So the next 10, 38, the Bible says, How God, how God, how God. Not how Jesus anointed himself. I know this is simple, but this is significant. How God. I tell young people, and one of the greatest thing we, things we can help young people with is to discover who they are. And the confusion in our world. I saw a 10-point plan that was written in the 1800s by a brilliant mind, a woman, that spoke about how this world will be destabilized and unsettled and how a new world order will be established by removing certain things from society. The first thing, pray out of schools. Number one, first thing, take God out of education. Because when you take God out of education, you can confuse young people because there's no basis of truth.
There's no norm. So you have people gripped by a spirit of blindness that are now the influencers, and they are the minority, man. They're not even the minority. They, they comma zero something percent. And 99% of people bow to these foolish agendas and things that people know is ungodly and untrue, people are now accepting and bowing to it. Now I'll tell you something. I will raise my grandchildren in the ways of God. I will see my grandchildren fulfill their, their future, what God has for them. I'm not against anybody, but I'm not going to allow people to bring their, their mess into my world. Because they don't have the truth, we have the truth. We have Christ. So listen, young people, get radical in the schools. Start prayer meetings. Those people can't throw you out of the school. You have your rights. You start prayer meetings in break time. You pray, pray, pray. You stand radical, unapologetic. Because everything the devil has done, we have to counter what Satan has done. And whatever the devil has taken out of our society, we need anointed young people. We need the Davids, the Esthers, the Jeremiahs, the Nehemiahs. We need the young Jonathans that says something has to be done. If the older people don't have the guts or the spine, I as a 16 year old, 17 year old will not bow to this graven image. I will not bow to Paul. I'm going to call upon the name of God on Yahweh and I'm going to see the fire of God come down and you're going to see a revival. I said you're going to see a revival. Come on young people, we are praying for a revival. But no revival is going to come through people that are lukewarm, afraid apologetic it's gonna happen through people fueled by the Holy Ghost people that are not afraid people that will go to school and say the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel I'm anointed I'm appointed I don't have a spirit of fear but power love and a sound mind shout it again young people say I'm anointed for purpose say it in Jesus name